Hey everybody. Today we're talking about normal probability distributions and the empirical rule. We're in a situation where we're dealing with a continuous random variable whose density curve has this sort of bell shape. Most of the probability is right near the center, near the mean, but in theory results as big or as small as you like are possible. This probability distribution comes up all the time in real life. For example, if we measure the lengths of randomly selected newborn babies, measure the speeds of vehicles on an open stretch of highway, or look at the scores of randomly selected students on standardized tests, all of those random variables will have approximately normal distributions. The normal distributions are all symmetric about the mean. They look the same on the left and on the right. That means that the probability of getting a result less than the mean is the same as the probability of getting a result above the mean. So if we're talking about the lengths of randomly selected infants, we're just as likely to have one that is above average as below average. Normal distributions are completely specified by their mean and variance, their center and their spread. So um, here I've drawn a couple of pictures of bell curves with different standard deviations, different variances. The one with larger variance, of course, looks more spread out. A little bit of notation n of mu comma sigma squared refers to the normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared, or equivalently, standard deviation of sigma. When we look at the graph of a normal distribution, we can read off both the mean and standard deviation. Of course, the mean is just going to be the center, the peak of that bell curve. The standard deviation is going to be the distance from that mean, from the center, to the inflection points of the graph, the places where the graph changes from looking like the top of a hill to the bottom of a valley, from where it goes to be, from being umbrella shaped to cup shaped. Let's see an example. In 2017, scores on the SAT were approximately normally distributed with mean 1060 and standard deviation 195. So if we go out and we select a student at random, uh, one test taker at random, of course, the random variable x, their score on that test, is going to have an approximately normal distribution with mean 1060 and variance 195 squared. So here I'm drawing it. I'm labeling 1060, the mean, right in the middle. I'm going um, to the inflection point on the right and to the left, and I'm adding 195 to the mean and subtracting 195 from the mean. I've also gone ahead and drawn in a couple more values. I've gone an additional standard deviation above, above 1255 and another standard deviation below 670. When we look at density curves for random variables, we know that we're interpreting areas beneath as probabilities. So from this picture, we're seeing that the probability of randomly selecting someone between 865 and 1060 it's going to be substantially higher than randomly selecting someone who scores between 670 and 865. We'd like to be more specific. We'd like to be able to actually quantify these probabilities um, and actually compute them in, in general situations. The empirical rule is a good rule of thumb um, for estimating some normal probabilities for particular values. It's a, it's a good way to start thinking about probability in normal distributions. In any normal distribution, about 68% of the probability lies within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% lies within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% lies within three standard deviations of the mean. In terms of area, that's meaning that those proportions of the area under the graph of any normal curve are contained within those regions. For example, within one standard deviation of the mean, from mu minus sigma to mu, mu plus sigma, um, we get 68% of the probability, 68% of the area. So that shaded area is about 68% of the total area. Back to SAT scores. Um, let's apply the empirical rule to um, this distribution where we have a mean of 1060 and a standard deviation of 195. The empirical rule says if we go from one standard deviation below the mean to one standard deviation above, 865 to 1255, um, we get 98% we get of the probability. So there's a 68% chance if we select someone at random that their score is going to be in that range. Similarly, if we select someone at random, there's a 95% chance approximately that their score is going to be between 670 and 1450. And if we go a third, direct, third standard deviation above um, 1450 and below 670, 
um, we get 99.7% of the probability, so almost certainty. Using geometry, we can use the empirical rule to calculate a few other probabilities. So, for example, what's the probability of randomly getting a result that's more than one standard deviation from the mean? Of course, that's exactly the opposite of getting um, a result that is less than one standard deviation from the mean. So I'm going to get I'm going to get the probability of the shaded area by doing one minus the area of the unshaded area. So one minus 0.68. In other words, 0.32. Let's do one harder example. What's the probability that a randomly selected value is more than two standard deviations below the mean in a normal distribution? In other words, what's the area of that shaded region there on the left? The probability that x minus mu is less than negative two sigma. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to think about that shaded region as being one half of the region um, that is more than two standard deviations away from the mean. So basically take that shaded region on the left and copy it over there on the right at mu plus two sigma. Um, that doubled area now is going to be the complement of the region within two standard deviations of the mean. That region within two standard deviations of the mean we know should have area 0.95 by the empirical rule. So overall I'm doing one half, one minus 0.95, or 0.025. There's a 2.5% chance of randomly getting a value at least two standard deviations below the mean. 